Welcome my artistic friends to Monet Cafe. Join me today for this painting, Daisy Dance. It has lots of tips and artistic instruction and I'm so glad you're with me in Monet Cafe. Hello friends in Monet Cafe. I know I've been hiding behind the camera a lot lately, but I thought today, a lot of it's because my house is noisy a lot and it's kind of hard to film, so I have to do a voiceover, but today the hubby is out mountain biking and I have a precious few hours of quiet time and I know a lot of you guys can relate to a busy life and I, I just like to share that I think that's what's so neat about our channel and our Facebook group is that we have a commonality of uh, realizing that everybody has the same stuff <laughs> and we have to sneak in our precious painting time. So that's what I wanted to do today. I was outside the other day. My husband was so sweet. He was cutting the grass out here at our little farmhouse where we're living now. And um, he came in to stop. He stopped mowing and he came in to show me this little patch of flowers, little wildflowers, little daisies. I know this photo isn't great, but um, I just snapped a picture of them um, and he actually just left them. He didn't mow them over. And so it's neat. I know a lot of you guys, um, I get to hear in our Facebook group or read that uh, you guys have um, accommodating spouses or partners as well. And um, that's just always such a blessing. So anyway, Thank you, uh, kudos to my hubby for not cutting down the little daisies. But I've been so busy, I know I've been uploading some videos. Thank you guys so much for all of the, the likes and the views and the, the channels just growing, it's so awesome. Um, but uh, I've been busy a lot lately and, and painting things a little bit kind of, uh, a little rushed. Um, so today with this little time I have, I thought I'd just paint something just for me. And I did a little, let me grab it, hang on. <laughs> I did a little, um, um, like a teeny painting of the daisies the other day just to get an idea and it was fresh and fun and so I thought I'd do a bigger version of it today. So I'm going to give some, uh, try to give a lot of instruction but I'm going to just enjoy myself. Have you guys ever wanted to do that? And I think that's what art is all about is just taking a precious moment to escape and when we paint it's like we can't focus on all of the other challenges of life so that's what i'm going to do today so anyway i hope you'll join me i will give some instruction but let's just enjoy these beautiful daisies in my front yard all right let's go before i get started on the main painting i wanted to give you a little speed version of the little mini painting that i did it's often a good idea to not only get a sketch um, you know for values basically but also sometimes just to do a, a little version of your painting um, again it just helps you um, make better choices when you go to commit to the the big version so this is just my little fun mini painting I literally did it the other morning when I woke up early before I had to get off to do other chores and you know sometimes it's just fun to do something that you're not so serious about so this was a fun little painting and um, I just thought I'd share this process so after this we'll get to the main painting got started I wanted to go ahead and show you my setup here and my reasoning behind it I've got my little mini painting I did the other day just up here really more for uh, color notes or motivation for my choices with color kind of like the color palette going on um, I've got my little photo here that I took and by the way you don't have to be an amazing photographer or have an amazing camera to get some good reference images <clears throat> you can uh, um, really one of the first things is get a good eye for composition and taking your photos but a color, uh, I mean a photograph is just uh, kind of a little road map um, for getting ideas for your painting and that's what this one's going to be for me. Um, I have a piece of UART sanded paper here. You hear that sanded surface? Um, we talk a lot if you're a new beginner um, with, when you're painting with pastels you really need a paper um, or you get better results with a paper that has a sanded surface. The pastels need a, some grit to hold on to. Other, that's why I have this little tray here. It's just aluminum foil I have here. It catches the dust that falls, but if you don't have grit on here, 
um, a lot of it's just going to fall off and you can't get the layering. So UART paper, if you're going to invest in a good paper, UART is a really good one. I talk a lot on this channel about, uh, especially if you're first getting started, you don't want to put so much money into everything. We have a lot of homemade videos that I've created where you can save some money. I still use those too. I mean, I really like working on some of the homemade surfaces. But again, if you're going to invest in a good paper, UART is a great one. This is just a piece. I just pulled out a piece of the 9x12 um, in uh, one of the pads that they sell with 10 sheets in it. And um, so I'm just working directly from, from one of these pieces. I often buy the bigger pieces of UART paper and cut them down to sizes that I like to use. That's a little more economical, but I like these, these pads too. Now what I'm going to do is um, a lot of times, uh, all the time really, it's a good idea to get um, a plan before you start your painting. You don't just want to willy-nilly jump into it and because a lot of times uh, you go in unexpected places, but having a roadmap or a plan is a great way to get started. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done this a lot, but I was recently at a uh, workshop with Karen Margulis, and she just hit it home and stressed the importance of it again um, to do a, a value study and a simple, simple plan before you start your painting. So that's what I'm going to do right now, and uh, it's best to do it with... Uh, um, shades of uh, value of gray. Um, I got some markers on Amazon. These are grayscale markers and they come with a, a whole bunch of different uh, grayscale uh, uh, shades or values and uh, I picked out my three favorite. You don't want to go overkill with this. You really only need about three values to work with and so I'm going to do a quick little sketch here um, to show you how I'm going to interpret this photo um, into what I think would make a pleasing painting and composition. So let me grab my markers and I'll do that. Now I'm speeding this up because it's very simple and that's the goal is you want to keep your um, value sketch super simple, uh, focusing on big shapes and really just the three major values. And the circles are just to remind me where the bigger flowers will be. There's really not much need to put in all of the smaller ones that will be in the painting. So. That's pretty much it. Here are the pastels I've chosen for this particular painting. It looks kind of like a lot. I've been working more with a limited palette lately, but I didn't want to have to bother with finding more pastels once I got started. So um, what I'm trying to accomplish here is to, I, I really liked that peachy, pinkish sky that I had in the little sample uh, painting that I did. And I love some of the teals. Um, they were playing off of each other nicely. Of course, I need some, you know, good warm greens for the grasses. And um, those flowers are going to be daisies I guess or whatever the little I don't know what they were called in my field they were kind of like weeds <laughs> but of course I'm gonna need some whites and some or not I usually don't use solid white I typically use just a very light value of another color in this case it's blue um, but I need some uh, cooler and darker values to represent flowers uh, or the petals that aren't in the sunshine and that may be buried down deeper. So some of these other colors are going to be the, the darker value um, flowers or petals. Um, so, you know, you get an idea here of kind of, uh, of course, some purples for shadows and, um, and some uh, more neutral colors. This is more of a neutral green and so is this one. Um, when things get further back in the distance, they get more neutral. This is actually kind of a neutral. You notice how that one's duller than this uh, particular tealish green. Um, so neutrals are good to have um, so that the whole painting isn't shouting with color and it pushes things back into the distance. So that's how I'm planning to get started. So let's see how this progresses. For this painting, I'm going to approach it uh, with no wet type of underpainting. If you've watched some of my videos, you see sometimes I will do an alcohol wash where I literally put the pastels down uh, or an initial layer and then I uh, paint it really with alcohol or water you can use. This UART paper is great for that. Sometimes I'll use acrylic ink to get an underpainting. Sometimes I'll use the Neo Color 2 wax pastels. I, I want to use those again. I haven't used them in a while. But in this case, what I'm going to do, and, and I've done this in quite a few videos, is kind of a, a complimentary underpainting just with pastels and then I'm going to blend it with a piece of pipe foam insulation. Um, I'll show that um, when I get to it uh, and, and describe more about it. But uh, notice I'm using lots of warm on the warmer side of the color wheel, uh, warmer colors, and I wanted to throw in that pink 
sometimes instead of reds I'll lean more towards pink and peachy colors now there's the pipe foam insulation I showed a bigger piece of it so um, it was fast but <laughs> it's literally just um, something that you can buy at a hardware store it's really cheap um, but artist Karen Margulis um, has been the the person I think she might have taken it from somebody else uh, who kind of taught about how to use this and it really does work what great for blending now, I don't blend a lot uh, except at the initial stages of a painting but what this does is it kind of gets away all that white on the paper or cream colored and it establishes a, a soft background or underpainting now that's the underpainting so I'm done there now I'm going and I'm going to establish more of the darks and what I've done is even though the photo didn't have it it kind of did subtly um, I, I'm creating a a trail or a path that kind of draws the eye into the painting it's going to get mostly covered up but most of that dark will still kind of um, show through enough to keep the eye engaged um, now I'm just getting down some of my uh, tree values in the background I darkened up the trees as well trees are almost always one of the darker things in your painting because they stand vertically um, the sky is almost always the lightest thing and the flat grasses will be the next lightest thing in the painting. Things like trails like that, deep grasses in the foreground, they're almost always darker in value. I've got a lot of videos that talk about value and that's such an important thing with painting and getting uh, good art. Now I'm adding some darker greens. I want to have some interest and variety in those uh, the darks. You don't want just flat color in one color. So I'm even with some of those lighter blues I put back there. I'm, I'm going over them and putting a little bit of a more of a middle value blue to kind of draw the eye back into the scene. Um, now I don't even know what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm drawing in the big, I've got a little piece of willow charcoal and I'm drawing in my flower shapes and I'm just getting in the big ones. I'm trying to get a good composition and not have things lined up um, or in a pattern. Uh, life and um, nature has this beautiful randomness to it. So uh, you want to try to emulate that and not have things too samey. We, we just have this way of making things look um, ordered and structured and sometimes we got to fight the urge to do that and uh, really think <laughs> you know sometimes we have to pause and actually think about things while we're painting which is a good idea um, now again I'm still establishing some values I really liked um, that little um, kind of a purpley lavender in the sky I used noticed how I brought it down into the field you really want to emulate what's going on with your sky into your ground um, it's going to make a more harmonious painting. So that's why sometimes when I'm working on the sky, I'll go ahead and take some of that sky color and just add it somewhere down into the, um, the ground portion of the painting. It just, again, harmony and uh, consistency and it just makes a painting feel more like it really does because that's in, in, in real life because that's what happens in nature. Color has this neat way of just bouncing and playing uh, a, against everything or in combination with everything that you see um, so a, a painting real quick, quickly can look amateur if you just have a blue sky and green grass and you know just colors uh, in little individual places rather than letting them play around with each other all over the whole scene so all right I'm gonna paint a little bit more but you see now I've got the complimentary underpainting down I've established the darker values and now I'm gonna start playing around with the actual color um, of the scene. That's what's called local color, the greens, the things that you naturally see with your eyes. So enjoy this. You know me, I'll pop back in to give some artistic advice.
This is a point that I, I mention often in some of my videos where I've uh, established the painting to a point that I really kind of liked it at this loose, um, rough stage. And uh, if you ever get a chance to video yourself painting, it's a good idea because you get to look back and kind of see sometimes where we um, could remember maybe to slow down and uh, to keep things fresh. Um, and, and I was happy with the final painting, but I was tempted almost at this phase to make the flowers pink. They were just, there was such a nice little harmony going on with those pinks and those greens. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd comment on that because a lot of times we can learn a lot by taping yourself, uh, filming yourself, and going back and reviewing what you've done. So, lesson to myself as well. <laughs>
sure why I didn't notice it early on but that one main daisy that I had even drawn in the value sketch was right smack dab in the middle and a little bit too high in the composition uh, compared to some of the other flowers sometimes I like one that's popping up real high but it wasn't really working great so notice how I turned my easel or my board over and uh, I'm using a stiff bristle brush um, to just brush that uh, pastel I mean that um, pastel off and the daisy out of there um, and now I can just kind of go back over and subdue it uh, make the sky kind of put it back in place and um, and put another daisy I wanted it a little bit smaller and just down a little bit more in the composition it ended up being still a little bit too in the middle for my liking but um, it was better than it was before so there you go you can actually erase pastel if you need to in a pinch so it worked out well for me I'm taking a harder pastel called a new pastel in you pastel and uh, it's great for the final stages where I can just uh, kind of outline some of the petals keep it really loose and artistic though um, and also I uh, you need to keep it a very uh, a light touch uh, if you're gonna do it on some of those flowers that are more in the shadows you don't want a bright white anywhere in shadowy areas
where I'm using a product called Blair Fixative and what it does is when you've gotten too many pastels down and you can't really get in good layering uh, it works twofold um, it gives you some splattery effects if you barely hold the nozzle which makes a real artistic look and it also gives a little extra grit to the surface so you can put some more pastel down and it gives a little darker in the foreground a darker appearance so I guess it's a threefold benefit when you use this I don't always use it but sometimes if I want to glaze over um, and get that kind of fresh look um, it's really really a neat technique also too I have been a little heavy-handed in my past artwork career for doing too many single blade grasses um, it's better if you do more of an impression of grasses uh, than actually drawing them out with um, individual strokes. So I'm really just trying to put in a few and that fixative helped me to do that. And then I'm just going to be turning pastels really on their side and um, kind of just giving some color in there rather than thin blast, uh, blast grass blades. Um, and that uh, I love that teal that I'm adding in there too. Don't be afraid to use uh, cooler tones rather than just the greens you see in the in the local color or what you're actually seeing with your eye. So um, again, the the fixative is a great tool, uh, but I don't use fixative at the end of my painting. I get a lot of people asking me that question. Um, it it will darken the whole painting. Uh, and notice when I used it, I didn't just leave it. I'm I'm using it for a purpose to add more on top of it. So there's the answer to that question. Never use fixative at the end of a painting, or at least I don't anyway. it up at this point but I thought I'd go ahead and show you a close-up of my little bee process another little helpful tip from artist Karen Margulis she is such a wealth of pastel information and uh, I love her little bee technique I basically just make um, three little dark um, a really dark pastel little dots um, then you add like on the thorax of the body like a orangey a warm color and then kind of a little brighter yellow on the back now bees are 
they're just an impression of them. When you see them out in nature, you don't see an actual bee. You just kind of see them moving. They're so fast anyway that you just, everything should be impressionistic with the bee. It doesn't need to have too much detail. Um, but now I'm going to zoom in here and show you the wing. Um, no, I, this is actually a pastel that fell uh, when wind blew my pastels over when I was outside and it created a, a sharper edge so that was a nice little edge to do those two little bee wings but that's all you need is a little impression of a bee and um, I liked this uh, experience because I got to just relax and do some painting and it was a lot of fun for me so I hope you enjoyed this demo here's the final painting and uh, I called it Daisy Dance because they looked like they were dancing but anyway you guys are awesome I'm so thankful for each and every one of you join us in our Facebook group Monet Cafe Art Group if you haven't already and if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do thanks so much guys happy happy painting